All right, let's talk about everyone's favorite head coach, Josh McDaniels, taking a ton of criticism after the Raiders were not able to beat the Chicago Bears. He's been taking a ton of criticism really since before he even got the Raiders job, uh, which is once it was announced, uh, people didn't love to hire. Uh, So let's talk about maybe, you know, does he deserve all the blame? How much blame does he deserve, right? That's that's a good question to ask. People always look for simple answers. So a lot of people love to, well, get rid of the coach, get a different coach in there. Things will look completely different. But how true is that in this scenario? First, I want to start off with this chart because this was actually surprising to me because I've been very critical of a few of Josh McDaniels' Uh, fourth down decision making calls really uh, a couple particular ones late in the game but you look at the you know how often teams go for it when analytics say that they should while they're not exactly you know at the top of the pack things aren't exactly looking great by them they're you know I would say what uh kind of right at like the fringe bottom 10 route so they're not a disaster they're not New England you know uh the Jets are also at zero percent but they've only had two opportunities and to have Zach Wilson so I kind of get that so it's not great you are losing something you are leaving points on the board by not going for it in certain scenarios uh you know making the wrong calls here but it isn't the worst in the league I do have to say though I still think a couple of them have been particularly bad so while maybe the you know overall numbers aren't a disaster I do think he's had a couple of rough ones but the fourth down decision making again you'll live with this right I mean there's really good head coaches who are worse uh, on this list currently like I would say you know Mike McDaniel really good head coach uh you know Mike Tomlin, John Harbaugh, these are guys who I think are great head coaches who are worse on that list. So if you make up for it in other ways, no one's really going to criticize you. Uh, And it is a small sample size, right? He's had nine opportunities to do this. So that's all worth mentioning. And last year, the Raiders were right around a very similar uh, spot on the list. But let's talk about some X's and O's. Is it his fault that the offense looked terrible here? Well, no, it wasn't. It wasn't all his fault. He had some criticism. We are going to get into the criticism, but I want to be clear, and that's, I think, honestly, the Bears defense kind of played good. Like, that's one of those weird things where we don't, we kind of forget that, like, bad defenses are still capable of having good days, and I I thought that happened here. Like, this is a one-on-one matchup on the outside with Devontae Adams, uh, which, like, okay, this feels like a pretty great scenario. This is what you're trying to draw up if you're an offensive coordinator and the Bears are just giving it to you. As you see, Adams is going to run to slant, and I guess the one thing you could argue is that the cornerback here for Chicago does appear to know, I don't know if I'd say like know what's coming, but is playing it very well is probably the way I would say, and maybe you could argue that the play calling is a bit predictable, but I don't know. We're also just five minutes into the first quarter. I think that, you know, Adams didn't really sell any other route too well, and he, you know, uh, the corner is able to come in and hopefully make a play for them and as you see Adams cuts in and he's not able to get the catch there so it's like I'm not saying like oh wow clearly Devontae Adams sucks like no Tyreek Stevenson who is a corner who hasn't done a lot this year made a good play like that's possible that happens it's the NFL bad NFL players are really good players and can make something like this happen this was an aspect of it was you know uh the Bears were winning on the outside uh, on occasion. But going over here, so does that mean that that's it? That the Bears are, you know, uh, just a good defense against the Raiders, apparently, and that's all it was? Well, no. There were some coaching mishaps, some things that went wrong. And again, it's always difficult, X's and O's wise, to truly just blame process. So much of it is going to be blaming results just because of the nature of, you know, how the game works. But like this play, they're going to go for just a halfback screen. That's the way this play is designed to work. Hoyer the Destroyer takes the snap. He is going to sort of fake as though he's going to give it to the other halfback who was in the game. But I'm highlighting the guard, the left guard here. I don't really know exactly what he's doing. He's kind of trying to sell as though he's going towards the uh, left, I guess. I mean, watch him kind of just slowly jog out to nobody in particular. Also, that screen was completely broken up. Probably should have been intercepted, if we're being honest. So the Bears all over it. And even if they caught the screen pass, there was not enough blockers over there to make the play work. This is a bad play by the Raiders. It was poorly executed, so it might not be the play call, but execution at a certain point does have to fall on the head coach. I often say that a great way to, you know, great indicator of how good of a play caller you are is how well do screen passes work. If you're fooling teams with screen passes, you're probably a good play caller. If teams are all over your screen passes, they're probably figuring out when you're dialing up screen passes. 
And also, something like this, to me, this is the biggest issue of Josh McDaniels, and it's more of a philosophy issue than just, like, things going wrong, right? Like, okay, some of these fourth down decision-making calls, you can look at the numbers and look at the game situation and legitimately say, this was a bad call. That last play I showed you, you can legitimately look at that and say, that was poorly done by the Raiders. This is not that simple. This is something that certain NFL guys and football guys will swear by is the correct way to run it offense and I would disagree where it's a second down and five what they're going to do is have a receiver run a clear out route have another receiver run underneath the zone coverage as you see Hoyer is going to take the snap he looks down the field and there's there's a window there's for sure a window you have schemed somebody open on this play Josh McDaniels this play worked as designed Hoyer is going to throw it down the field they get three yards on that play that's what they wanted Uh, again maybe they wanted an extra yard or two not the best spot I'll be honest but still that's exact, pretty much what you expect on that play is to set up a third down and short. And to me, therein lies the problem with Josh McDaniels' offense and why I personally am not really a fan of his offense, even if it has worked out really well in the past. It is an offense that can work. You can say, well, it only worked because of Tom Brady. It worked with Mac Jones for a year as well. So that's not exactly true. But I think the issue is that when you're not getting explosive plays and you have to dink and dunk down the field, you're basically relying on your team to just be perfect. You can't commit penalties. You can't take a sack. When one thing goes wrong, then everything goes wrong. Because like going over here, it puts you in situations like this where you have to win on a third down and six. And, you know, uh, I think that we've seen, like, I thought you know, Derek Carr was much better at third and downs, right? Garoppolo was going to be better than Hoyer, obviously. This play, you have a receiver going to be going over the middle. This is going to be tight end Michael Mayer, the rookie tight end, and watch what happens. Hoyer is going to take the snap, a bit of a high snap, but he uh, does a good job. You see that Mayer is about to cut over the middle. Seems like there's a window here. And as you see, Hoyer's throw is a you know little bit off, and Mayer's not able to make that grab. Mayer still probably should have caught that one. And so you could easily look at that and say, ah, kind of a bad break, right? Like, you know, you did everything right. You just got to make those plays. You can make those plays. You can get touchdowns. And I think that would be a pro Josh McDaniels argument is, no, the Raiders have to execute these plays better. And if they do, the offense can work, as we've seen it work in the past. My argument against that is that I think you're just making things tougher on your offensive players. Let's be honest. You don't have superstar quarterback play, even with Garoppolo there. I like Garoppolo. He's a solid quarterback, but he's not a superstar quarterback. Jacoby Myers and Devontae Adams are both really good at football. There's no denying that. Uh, But again, it would be nice if you could get them to push the ball down the field a little bit more and have their star plays instead of going for 12 yards, going for, you know, 30 yards, right? Right. That's just how I view offense, and I I think at the end of the day, I do think that this is probably going to be it for Josh McDaniels. I do. While I can make arguments for why Josh McDaniels isn't that bad, I can. I can make arguments for it. I can say the analytics aren't as bad as maybe watching the game feels in terms of fourth down decision making. I can point towards certain years where this kind of offense has really worked out really well. You can make those kind of arguments. But it's a lot harder to make the arguments of why he's an actively good head coach, right? You can make arguments as why he's maybe not a trash head coach like somebody uh, make him out to be. Someone might make him out to be. But at the end of the day, if that's the best you got is a guy whose offense is kind of old school but still can work and is a bit behind the times on analytics but not a disaster, that's still not a good head coach. So at this point, you know, it's not working. Maybe it can turn around. Maybe they can start to execute these plays better. And we'll see, but as of right now, it's just not working, and I do think he deserves the criticism. That's how I view it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.